that is coming from there. I'm fighting for a worthy cause. But uh, I don't know, call me lame, but I think the best peaceful protest is done in the voting booth. I mean, this is politics. That was sucker applause. It's like it, it, it sounded so nice that people felt, you know, let's applaud the girl. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's sexist. Kat, uh, last word on this topic to you. Yeah. Uh, Vox editor said that there should be riots wherever uh, wherever uh, Trump shows up, and then he, I think he got suspended. Fine, but that helps Trump a lot more yeah. than anything because saying, "Hey, Trump is a sexist." And then they're going to respond by saying, yeah, well, look, you guys were throwing, you were, you were pelting a woman with raw eggs. Yes. So, I mean, that's Good not for the hair. very nice to women. She, she responded, though. The way she responded, she was just kind of like, huh? Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, okay. Like, she didn't really, I don't know, I would have been a little bit more angry. Mm -hmm. Or saying, you know, he's racist because he, he wants to stop immigrants from coming in. But then they're, you know, standing there saying, I want to make this Mexico. Yeah. So they're taking away any legitimacy that criticisms have. Uh, of Trump when they when they act this way. That'll fight, but if you get pelted with eggs, you'll just think, oh, finally, breakfast. I would be like, this is going to go viral. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> you, would have, you would have to, I think we would all agree that this was a win for Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah. This yeah, was a huge win. Those those visual images on TV, seeing all of that and seeing that. Mexican, makes you want to vote for him. It makes you want to vote for Even, him. Even, I mean, like, I'm on the fence and I'm like going, when I, that just makes me run towards Donald, and then, I, then he says something like what I'm about to say, talk about now, and then I kind of slow down. Uh, this happened, Donald Trump singling out a black person in the crowd during a rally yesterday in Redding, California. We had a case where we had an African-American guy who was a fan of mine. Great fan, great guy. In fact, I want to find out what's going on with him. You know what I'm, oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think he, he left out the word friend. A man named Gregory Cheadle says he was the African-American Trump was referring to. He's a Republican running for Congress in California, and he told a local paper uh, he was proud that Trump acknowledged me. Tucker, my theory is when, when, uh, when he said uh, my African-American, he was shorting, uh, my was short for Michigan. <laughs> You, look, it, it, don't read too much into it. He's not a cringing, sensitive guy, the one that liberals yeah. expect you to be, and yeah. they're all upset about it. That's just, you know, he's insensitive. That's the way he is. Much more upsetting, and a real issue, is what he's been saying about this judge yes. involved in the yeah. university case where he's saying the guy should be disqualified because his parents were born in Mexico. That is a suicidal thing to say. Yeah, he's got to stop that Well, stuff. he's self-destructive. And yeah. that's, for, for those of us who think he's bringing up important issues... You know what that is? When he's talking about the, the judge has to be recused because of Mexican heritage, it's just like people claiming white privilege. Like you can't have a white person uh, uh, write a movie about black well, people. Well, it's, it's demented. And yeah. by, by the way, it's not to excuse the race baiting that's going on on the left for the last 50 years, yeah. which kind of defines the Democratic Party. But it's still wrong, and you shouldn't say stuff like that. Andrew, thoughts? Um, well, on that, I think, uh, you know, I disagree with Tucker. I, I think it's a smart move. Yes. <laughs> Why? Well, it's just because that's what I do at jury duty. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, that's true. Right. You, you go to jury Does duty and they're like, well, how do you feel about Polish people? And I'm like, I hate pierogies. And they're like, all right, go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think this is just him trying to, you know, take advantage of a situation. So you're saying, well, he, can I say one thing also yeah. about the, when he was saying my African-American? Yeah, it comes out awkward, but if you keep on watching the tape, he actually celebrates the guy yeah. for beating up a Ku, a Ku, Ku Klux Klan. I don't yeah. even know how to say that group. Uh, <laughs> you're so non-racist. Yeah, yeah. No, but he, he celebrates the guy for beating up some KKK dudes. So it's like, if you actually listen to the entire thing, yep. he's yeah. incredibly supportive of the bravery of this. I hear you. You're turning group. into a Trump ad. Yes. I'm not so bad, but hey, listen, I'm consistent. I don't you know are, what you I am. You are consistent. I don't know. No. You are you the cat, last word? Well, I, yeah, I mean, about the judge thing, you, you can't be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you really just can't be doing that because, it, again, it legitimizes, oh, you know, if you can't, every time someone has a problem with you, find some random thing to blame it on, oh, wait, it works for him every time, so it probably won't matter. You know, it's kind of interesting, Kat, how many times have you said about Donald Trump in the last four months? You exactly. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, he does it. It won't make a difference. And he still does it, and it doesn't make a difference. Yes. It make, people true. are like, yeah, well, you know what? Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. Then maybe by that logic, uh, Joanne, we should tell him to do it so nope. he'll stop. Well, and it could always be worse. He didn't nickname <laughs> his African-American something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. could, have, could have gone really <laughs> yeah. wrong. So. I think, uh, yeah, I think it just with African-Americans, it's very weird when white people, like, they're saying they're mine. Yes, that's a problem. do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
But I, I think I think what you hit on is really important with Trump. I think we got to celebrate him. I think that would rattle him. Yes. He thrives in chaos. Yes. But if we start saying, yeah. Trump, you know what? You're the best, and your hands are actually huge, and yeah. your hair is great. If everyone was only nice to him, what would he do? He doesn't know how to handle that. To talk For real. Oh, all right, we got to go. Before we go to break, though, I want to go to a, have a quick quiz to our special off-site focus group. Uh, they're in another room. How many of you find me physically attractive? Come on. There you go. That's good. Just checking. Coming up, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Not on this show, but we're going to talk about them, how they trashed each other in dueling speeches. Stick around. Ideas aren't just different. They are dangerously incoherent. They're not even really ideas, just a series of bizarre rants, personal feuds, and outright lies. I will leave it to the psychiatrist to explain his affection for tyrants. It's not hard to imagine Donald Trump leading us into a war just because somebody got under his very thin skin. All right. It was like someone reading back everything I did on spring break in 1987 before there were camera phones. Now, the message was harsh, but too bad. The messenger is worse. Having, having Hillary give a critique on foreign policy is like having Charlie Sheen deliver a speech on self-control. It's like Bill Clinton writing an advice column on fidelity. The fact is, Hillary's attack on Trump are about his words when everything on Hillary are deeds. Benghazi, the Russian reset, the Iranian Green Revolution, and that email mess. Hillary exposed classified info more often than Anthony Weiner did with his own crotch. <laughs> to Trump's credit, to Trump's credit, he's done nothing. He has no record of foreign policy achievement, but he has no record of foreign policy blunders. He's an unknown unknown. We don't even know what we don't know about him. So who would think that the key advantage in the arena of foreign policy would be no track record. But that's what's happening when you run against Hillary. She's done so many bad things. We prefer a man who's done nothing at all. Imagine if you were having open heart surgery and this is the choice. Hillary, who's a surgeon, but none of her patients ever survive. And Donald, who's never done surgery before, but he did watch a lot of General Hospital. Is it scary that that's good enough for me? All right, period. Before I go to, to, to the panel here, I gotta play some tape because I like the fact that Hillary is now modulating the way she talks. She's not yelling and screaming. But then last night she did this. I say to myself, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on us, right? We are not buying that. All right, I wanna play that again, but look at the guy behind her. Uh, we spot shadowed. I say to myself, Hey, wait a minute. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on us, right? We are not buying that. I was so happy to hear that. I was like, oh, I got it. Slow motion, please. Why shame on us, right? We are not buying that. But you know what he knew was that was like it was like he was at a, a Leonard Skinner concert and she just played Freebird. Right. I know that song. <laughs> I know that song. <laughs> Boomer, what'd you make of her speech? Uh, what I make all of her speeches? I don't know whether she's telling the truth or not. Yeah. I can't figure it out. I, all I know is that watching you guys do this on a daily basis, I watch them give a speech and I know that they're lying. And then they come to you guys. You tell us that they're lying. And then somebody on the panel says, "Well, that's politics. Yes. <laughs> like it's okay." That's it. That's what that's what Beckel used to do for us. In the, in the, right. In the world of football, I mean, we know the winner and the loser right after the play is over. Yeah. We know whether I kicked your ass or you yeah. kicked my ass. In this world of politics, I can't figure out what is going on. And and who's telling the truth? So all I can say, when I listen to her, I just stop listening. Yeah, that's, I, that, I listen. that, 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 that's a bad sign for her. Andrew, where are you in this little world? Um, I just like that we're wearing the same shirt. Yes. <laughs> that's true. This is the, uh, the Shawshank Redemption spring line. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> yes. No. Uh, I, 
Honestly, I, 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 I don't really know what to, to make. She's a horrible communicator. It's kind of sad that, that Trump is a better communicator, even though he's not really saying anything. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, right? it, yeah. it's just like Trump is like, gobble, gobble. It's like, listen, Trump is listening to someone speak Italian. Like, you don't know what the hell they're saying. You're like, that sounds nice. What is that? I want to eat that. That's beautiful. And, and Hillary's like hearing someone speak Russian. You're like, that is frightening. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I oh. wouldn't know about that. <laughs> All right, Tucker. That is so good. <laughs> Foreign policy. We I'm want somebody over with Tucker. <laughs> yes. I see something happening later. Hey. <laughs> right, we're, we want an, in an arena where experience matters. We want somebody with no experience. Well, as you wisely pointed out, you know, compared to the option in this case, yeah, maybe we possibly do. I just, I'm, I'm struck. I mean, I think. Look, her criticism about his temperament and his inability right. to not rise. Yeah. To needling is a real thing, okay? And it's yeah. a huge problem for him. But when she says he's likely to get us into pointless foreign wars, you have to laugh. Yeah. He's a peacenik compared to her. By the way, he's, as you pointed out, gotten us in, into no pointless foreign wars. She's got a pretty bad track record yeah. on that question. Yeah. He's running as the peacenik. Yeah. He's running to her left, and I support that, by the way. He's only going to wage war on Macy's in the PGA. It's Anybody that leaves the United States. <laughs> it's totally right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's uh, only on brand protection ground. Exactly. In eminent domain, he's going he's gonna to go after yeah. Kat's house. I can't wait. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> for the debates because she's going to try to say all these things and attack him on specific things. He'll be like, yeah, well, what about, do we want to Benghazi? And then yes. be like, wow! Yeah. And then he wins. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter at all. I just, because she has so many bad things in her record. I can't believe she had the guts to brag about the way she handled n nuclear negotiations with Russia. She's yeah. like, I handled this. I'm like, you mean when you sold a fifth of our uranium and then got... 145 million sent to Clinton Foundation, which is your little slush fund. That, that's what you're bragging about. Oh. Come on, Joe. Thank you. I think Hillary, Hillary saw a window of opportunity, especially now. People are criticizing Trump. She's like, I'm going to jump on board. Call it a foreign policy speech, which she didn't really lay out the things she wanted to do. But I yeah. really wanted Trump to then hit back at her on Twitter. He just said that she was a phony, yeah. calling her crooked and lying. He could have just look at anyone else's criticisms of Hillary on Twitter. Take those arguments. Use the actual things that she has done wrong in foreign yeah. policy and start spreading that message. Or just say Benghazi yeah. and he wins. Yes. I'm serious. I think that's enough. All right. We got to uh, move like on. Style. Yeah. yeah, we have to move on because we've got a lot more stuff coming up. Did Lou Dobbs get snubbed yet again for People's Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive? <laughs> they laugh. It's the question special report refused to tackle. But first, what's the Dalai Lama think about the European refugee crisis? My guess is it's pretty deep. This is no time for ceremony. You traitor! Warlike measures cover our waters and darken our lands. Present! Why stand we here idle? Our brethren are already in the field. I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Buddhist. Buddhist. I speak of the Dalai Lama, who told a German paper this week that too many refugees are entering Europe, saying, quote, Europe, for example, Germany, cannot become an Arab country. Germany is Germany. There are so many refugees that in practice, it becomes difficult. Well, from a moral point of view, too, I think that the refugees should only be admitted temporarily. That's him trying to cover his tracks. Germany's Prime Minister, Angela Merkel, allowed 1.1 million refugees to enter the country, a decision that got her name Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2015. Good for her. But since then, the policy has become much less popular in Europe as crime and terrorism linked to ISIS has skyrocketed. So is this high drama llama correct? Or... Is this racist? <laughs> Andrew, is that racist or practical? I don't, I don't trust this Dalai Lama. <laughs> I'm, hey, no, I'm, I, look, I don't know anything about him, but who has benefited more from exile than the Dalai Lama? <laughs> That's true. Right? So I think he wants to stop the refugees because they're going to snatch up his speaking engagement. I mean, he's worried a, a really good Syrian refugee is going to pop up in Germany and then take over. Because we're done with this guy. Yeah, no, it's no, no. The same I outfit. love this Dalai Lama. Yeah. I love him. Isn't this the same guy that said if he had a female successor, she'd have to be hot? Yes. I love this guy. I love not. 
on PC, Dalai Lama. He's, 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 he's the Buddhist. He's, he's the, the Buddhist Trump. Trump. He's the Trump of the Dalai Lama. And you know what? It is better to be attractive. He's correct about that. <laughs> I love him. You uh, go on with your bad self, Dalai Lama. Yeah, Tucker, he, he's a lot like you. I think he could be Trump's VP. <laughs> he's my favorite Eastern holy man. My, <laughs> it actually makes me think more of Richard Gere that they're close. No, he raises like the deepest question. Does living in Germany make you German? Right. And of course, that's the position of all good Germans. They have to pretend. The irony And is, bad Germans. And bad Germans, <laughs> that's exactly right. The irony is that the refugees don't buy into that. That's a very Western notion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think your average Syrian refugee refugee living in Cologne or your average Turk living in Stockholm sees himself as German or Swedish? Of course not. And that's the whole problem, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. They see nationality as, like, tied to ethnicity. I mean, whether you should or not, that's how they see it. Yeah. Boomer, what do you, I mean, right now they foiled a, they foiled a plot yes. by terror. Germany foiled a plot of uh, Syrian terrorists who blended in with the migrants. So, I mean, he's not talking trash, the llama. No, I think he's talking realism is what he's talking. Yeah. And he's and he's basically saying what everybody's thinking. It's kind of like Just Donald like Trump. with the hot thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, there you go. Very good. So I, I would tell you that the way I look at this is that it's a serious discussion for serious people to have. No. We could have as much fun as no, we want to mean? have with it. He's, he's um, basically saying we're not competent enough, no, Boomer, no, no, former no, no, QB. No. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm saying that he's real about what he's saying. You're saying he's totally right. I t he's yes. totally right, and he's okay, real. I just wanted to uh, okay. what I said. I thought you were... understand that I am very smart. Yes, I understand <laughs> that very well. Yes. Uh, Joanne, I have a theory that the Dalai Lama... <laughs> what are you, you Boomer shaking no, no, his head? No, 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 no. I have a theory that, uh, that the reason why... The Dalai Dalai Lama is at peace. It has less to do with the religion and the more that he doesn't wear a belt. Because you, when you wear a belt, you're always aware of weight gain. It's actually proven, too, that suspenders do a better job of holding up your pants, and yet we have we stick to the belt. Yeah, the belt just the belt reminds me how much I ate the day before. He doesn't care. He's not wearing a yeah, belt. I do like, but again, speaking about practicality. Yes. That's what he's talking about when he's talking about refugees. And I'm tired of, of especially the left, trying to paint people who take the practical route as being right. non-empathetic. That's not the case. You're just trying to make sure everyone wins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last word, Sophie. I, I don't, I don't understand why uh, Germany can't become an Arab nation. <laughs> no, no I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know either. No, I'm being serious. Yeah, I well, they, they'll if find out soon enough. Nation and people vote to be an yeah. Arab nation, then that's their right. That's, like that's we not gotta accept. That. That. <laughs> Listen, no, but it, that is the point, right? Because that'll the be the last vote they ever have. But that's, fine. that's the point. <laughs> then no ban voting. What they will ban voting. All right, let's, over here. Get it back to me. I gotta move on. Vote to end voting. That's democratic. That's yeah. democracy. <laughs> that's you gotta trust it. democracy, man. If you uh, want that. All right. that's, that's all I'm saying. What if you did vote to end democracy? Listen, we voted to start voting, right? Women couldn't vote, and we're like, let's let them vote. So yeah. we voted for that. What a mistake that was. Thank hey. you. All right. Thank you. It's a joke. It's a joke, all female audience here for free, I might add. <laughs> all right. Coming up, is it time for a viable third party in America? And later. What we loved about Muhammad Ali. I'm so bad I make medicine sick. I'm so fast, man. I can run through a hurricane and don't get wet. When George Fulman meets me, he'll pay his debt. I can drown a drink of water and kill a dead tree. Wait till you see Muhammad Ali. A recent Wall Street Journal NBC News poll found that 47% of registered voters would consider a third party presidential nominee up about 10% from eight years ago. That's a lot of stats. I already forgot them. <laughs> Former New Mexico governor and my Pilates partner, Gary Johnson, <laughs> it's true, we stretch, wrapped up the Libertarian Party nomination this week. Everybody heard about it. He's chosen former Massachusetts governor, my other Pilates partner, Bill Weld, as his running mate. Meanwhile, Weekly Standard editor Bill Crystal is floating another conservative name, conservative lawyer, National Review writer, and Iraq war vet, David French. He's never held or ran for political office, but when has that stopped anyone? As for me, I'm still hoping this fella makes a run. <laughs> yeah, he is amazing, isn't he? Joanne, uh, can a third party candidate make a legitimate run this year? Oh, I think anything is possible this year. I mean, as we've seen with Trump name recognition and exposure, it's really important. So Johnson and Weld should consider releasing something like this. Fractured party? Want more choices? 
Call the offices of Johnson and Weld. Johnson and Weld. Have you been emotionally injured by a rally protester? <laughs> Tired of getting screwed by the establishment? Then call Johnson and Weld. Johnson and Weld. This is me before I went to Johnson and Weld. <laughs> this is me now. Still handsome. I call Johnson and Weld. They not only explain my rights, they also explain this Ayn Rand novel. Lazy <laughs> fair capitalism. <laughs> So if you are ready to buck the duopoly, choose the candidate who will stand up for your weed. Rights. Stand up for your rights. Johnson and Weld! I'm Gary Johnson, and I do not approve of this message. This was a terrible idea. Johnson and Weld! Great job. Very nice. Nice. Uh, very good. Gary seemed really happy to be there, I could tell. Yeah. You found him in the hallways, I imagine. Yeah, he really loves He me. roams. Yeah. He does roam. He's, he's, and he's got roaming charges. Andrew, third party, what do you think? Um, I need to know if there's a country that has a, a libertarian government. Yeah. Like, does that exist? No, and that's why there's no perfect government yet. <laughs> but I, I just don't, I know you're a libertarian. Yeah. I'll be honest, I just found out about libertarian. Like, for a long time, I thought they were just saying librarian and misspelling it. <laughs> I think this is very yeah. serious. Yeah. But if, there, if there was a country, and I was like, why do these librarians want to run for president? Uh, <laughs> but if there was a country that uses that philosophy and it, and it, and it works, then I'm okay with it. But if there isn't, then it's I don't the think only it's consistent philosophy. Oh, okay. Consistently. Yeah. Small government. Across the board. I have consistent. a problem with libertarianism as a libertarian, but I'll get into that later because I want to talk to Boomer. <laughs> Boomer, um, will a third party just hurt one of the... Uh, because nobody done it yet. <laughs> How about that, Andrew? They did do it before. Where? Greece. Wasn't the same. I mean, it wasn't the same. We, we perfected it because we're the greatest. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, these things have been done. I'm not against it. I, so libertarians are like, they're like Republicans, but they believe in abortion. Is well, they're, they're free markets, <laughs> free markets, free minds. That's what, all you got to remember. Free in. markets, yeah. free minds. You live your life the way you want to live it. I just don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I'll pay for my life. I'll pay for my responsibility. Yeah. I, I think that's a good flaw. I can get behind something like that. I just want to see it work. Like, is there a Norway, but kind of like that, that works there? Uh, kind of the opposite of Norway. Yeah, yeah the I know, but I'm saying it's like a little country where they got a lot of money that it works. Well... No. No, and it, cause it doesn't work. Uh, but look, we're not going to get a third party, you know, a real yeah. third party challenge this year. We're going to have a multi party system, which is a shame because the two party system keeps us moderate and stable. Yeah. But the internet, the whole message of the internet is my opinion matters. Mm -hmm. I'm a precious snowflake. Listen to me. I'm unique. And neither party represents anybody with any great precision. And so the move over the next 10 years is going to be toward a multi party system, and we're going to get one. And then that, that means that we could swing from one extreme to the other, given a plurality of votes. It means correct? every interest group that you hate, whether it's the NRA or NARAL, will be its own political party, and it will be absolutely necessary to pander to them to make your coalition that, win. That's when I introduced the Unicorn Party. <laughs> yeah. A horn, a horn in every pot. All right. This is why my problem with libertarianism is there's a hypocrisy involved. Uh, there's a disconnect. They are for the Second Amendment, but they're not for military force. Uh, if you, you, how can you love one and not the other? Like, if you believe in having a gun to protect your house, you should have the greatest military ever to protect your country. It's just like a giant house. We already, we already spend more on our military than the next ten countries combined. At so what? Let's do we just spend stop? more. Spend more. Let's spend more. And I'm the radical one for yes. thinking that's no, not but enough. Doesn't military spending offer us some advantage in uh, other areas? Other areas, like, Thank like you. we. It, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like we control the seas, right? Yes. So if you want to ship goods around the world, you got to pay the piper. Yes. So I want them to have to pay the piper. We don't actually collect tolls on the seas. I mean, we should. I don't know, but we do though, right? We do collect no, tolls. No, we don't. Because I mean, this is amazing. Let me ask you. No, 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 no. It's yeah. not. It's not necessarily a toll. Like I need five dollars for you to pass into Hoboken, right. but I, it's more like. <laughs> It's more like, hey, if you want to continue shipping shirts from here to there, you got to do what we say when this vote comes in. Well, we have like trade agreements and tariffs and stuff. Exactly, yeah. we can but, put but pressure with the that's, trade agreements. That's different. Yeah, no, but we keep it free. We keep. Can I just say one thing, yeah. Tucker? Again, I don't know a lot. Say one more thing. I don't Andrew. know a lot, okay? <laughs> but I'm getting tired of these European countries getting so highfalutin about their health care when we protect the water. You I really are want a Trump man. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're turning into Trump. Trump. Yes, you are. You are turning into Trump. Oh, before my eyes. You're even getting more orange.
Yeah. Yes. I can see it. I got to go, you guys. All right, we're running that. out of time. That's it. But I'm watching like weird stuff happen. All right. Still to come, I reveal the truth about the Loch Ness monster. Turns out he's really a tall drifter named Carl who couldn't swim. <laughs> Children, gifts from heaven or spawns of the devil? Why can't they be both? You'll be in the New York area and would like to be part of it. You can't spell brat without rat. I speak of the world's youngest narc, a six-year-old Massachusetts boy who called 911 this week on his dad for running a red light. 911, it's not your quarter. What's your emergency? Um, daddy went past a red light. He did? Mm -hmm. Is he home right now? Yeah. Can I talk to him? Hello? Hello? Hi, Quincy Police. Oh, no, I am, I'm just going to apologize. That's my five-year-old son. I just want to let us know you ran a red light. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, in China, a five-year-old destroyed this Lego sculpture just one hour after it went on display. It took three days, 10,000 bricks, and $15,000 to build. So are these incidents just kids not knowing any better, or is it something more sinister at work here? It's the subject of our new Healthy Parenting segment. Are kids evil? <clears throat> are kids evil, Boomer? No, they're not. I have a son and a daughter. Now, the daughter, you know, when she went through the evil stage, when she became a teenager, <laughs> like I'm sure your parents would definitely agree with me on this one, uh, that's the only time that they're evil. But I got to yeah. tell you, I'm blessed by having two great kids. Mm, Tucker, you have 30 children. I've got a ton. Uh, More than any non-Mormon you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Bad investment. They're great. And by the way, Lego is meant to be destroyed. It's like a cherry blossom. It's ephemeral. It doesn't last forever. Also, it was put together by an adult. It, that's true. So, But the other yeah. story really is the end. That's the end of America. When your kids are more loyal to the state than they are to mm, you, than yes. they are to dad. That's the Soviet Union. Yes. Like, that's bad. Wow. And it could only happen in Massachusetts. Yes. Andrew, get something out of your mouth and talk. That kid, look, <laughs> this kid is a rat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. All right. Yeah. No, I, I, okay, the kid who knocked over the Lego thing, I really don't feel bad for the Lego guy. Yeah. If you have, like, uh, that much time and thousands upon thousands of dollars to just build Legos your life, it's probably all right. You know, yeah. you're not having hard times. <laughs> but the kid that called the cops on his dad, you don't call the cops on your family. You hide your family from the cops if necessary. Yes. Exactly. But you don't think, you don't do that. I know you're, you always say if there's kids involved on the show, don't get too negative about the kids. But no, this kid is a nightmare. Oh. I have said that. It's probably a lovely child, Joe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no. I, I think we need to stop saying, you know, kids will be kids. Let them enjoy their childhood. No, I believe it's important to um, show kids what reality is like, treat them like adults, mm -hmm. give them responsibilities so they become instantly bitter and cynical, and then they don't have fun and get into trouble. Yes. My, I just want to add, before we go, my thought on this is totally different. I am tired of the release of 911 tapes because that's going to influence whether or not you call 911. If Tucker and I go out at night and maybe I ingest too much of a certain substance and Tucker goes, oh, I'm going to call 911, but he thinks, nah, I work at Fox. Fox News. Uh, uh, we both work at Fox News. Greg's, you know, on the ground drooling. Uh, this is going to show up everywhere, and then he's just going to leave me at the Motel Six with the sheep. <laughs> you are. That's why. That's, that's actually a conundrum I've faced on more than one. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I have too. I've I've called nine one one and just stopped at the second one. Been like, uh, sorry, butt dial. I'm sorry. <laughs> kill, no, uh, kill me's fine. Gotta go. All right. <laughs> We come back, some final thoughts on Muhammad Ali. Former <laughs> heavyweight boxing champ Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. Ali was known for his fast fists, his epic battles in the ring, quick wit, and humanitarian work. So we're going to close out our show with some final thoughts on the greatest. Boomer, you're up. Well, you know, I got a chance to meet Muhammad Ali later in life, but he was very engaging, one of the few athletes that I asked for an autograph fun, from, and he signed uh, a pair of his uh, boxing gloves, and uh, still have them to this day, and uh, certainly a sad day in the sports world. Mm -hmm. Andrew, you're pretty young, but you must have... Uh you know who Muhammad Ali is. Yeah, yeah, you know. He's just an amazing guy. Like, not that many people are willing to sacrifice celebrity and to do what they 
feel about his political opinions. He stayed true to how he felt and what was the right thing to do in, in the moment. I, I was down money. You barely exposed to Muhammad Ali was a kid watching his fights in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And my view of him has not changed. He was uh, obviously a very graceful athlete, but a savage athlete. And yeah. I was always impressed by that. He didn't just want to beat Joe Frazier. He wanted to destroy Joe Frazier mm -hmm. as a man. Yeah. He was all... in and you know judgment on that but it was